Well, good morning, church. Good morning. good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Katie. I'm the pastor here at Grace United Methodist Church. We are so glad you've joined us this morning, either in person or online. Welcome to everyone who's joining us from Facebook. We'd love for you to comment. Let us know that you're here and joining us from wherever you are. I'm going to invite everyone, if you are able and comfortable, let's stand and call one another to worship. God of the prophets calls to us today. Call us into your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of the poets reminds us again how much you love us. Sing to us in your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of the disciples, teach us how to follow you. Teach us your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of all creation, help us to know your ways. We gather to hear your call, to sing your praise, to teach each other, to pray and worship as the body of Christ. Let us sing together. Let us turn our hearts and minds to this time of prayer as we call one another together. We are gathered to worship our God. Send your spirit upon us. We come from many places with many burdens. Send your spirit upon us. We turn our hearts to you, O God. Send your spirit upon us and make us your beloved family.
God of the ages and God of all generations, we come before you rather ashamed of our actions, our hopes and plans for the future in the frenzied place of our life. We have not given space or time for the wonder of worshiping you. We are just like our ancestors who have gone before us. We have not placed you at the center of our life or at the center of our heart and mind. We have not learned from either our ancestors' mistakes or our own mistakes. Merciful God, heal us, forgive us, and renew us. Generous God, we seek your mercy for the times we make excuses for ourselves, when we conveniently forget that you speak to us through our hearts, minds, and consciences to guide us in our decision-making. We seek your gracious blessing, even though we have been blind to the reminders of your presence with us. We have hardened our hearts in our busyness and neglected our suffering and despairing neighbors. Merciful God, heal us, forgive us, and renew us. Comforting God, we come as individuals with our own sin, but we also come as a community with our communal sin. Each of us is burdened with the memories of past sin, of past shared sinfulness, and we have turned our eyes away from the wonder and majesty of our guiding God and our life's choices are contrary to the ways of God. We come with heavy hearts, delay before you our shared and individual sin, aware that we have failed each other and you. Merciful God, heal us, forgive us, and renew us. God, our lives are in transition. As we transition into a society that's coming back out of our isolation, as we transition back into worship, back into spring, back into the next phases of our life, 
There is so much we've been doing that we need to just stop. And in this moment, as we slow down, we enjoy this holy space that we have come to, this time we have set apart to be with you. In the silence of our hearts, we name those we have brought with us in our spirits, those that we know need you to be so close, God. And so we offer to you those that we pray, God, be nearer to them. For the ones we love, for the ones who frustrate us, for the ones we pass by and don't even notice, Holy God, you are near to them and you are near to us. And so bind us together. Bind us as you have generation after generation, making us a people who can see you in our everyday, who find you in our greatest of joys and our deepest of sorrows. It is your faithfulness that we cling to this day as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power to the glory forever. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together, for we are God's work of art, each one of us a precious gem, a marvelous melody, a potter's delight. We are God's handiwork, woven together in love, shaped with infinite compassion, painted with incredible beauty. We are the Church of Jesus Christ, diverse in human qualities but united in our call to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are the body of Christ, living in his truth, sharing his peace, carrying his hope, embodying his love throughout the world he loves so much. We are here to be reminded once more who we are, whose we are and what our lives are about. We are here to be uplifted, renewed, and empowered to live out the miracle of who we are by the power of God working in and among us. We open ourselves to God who makes all things new. Let us sing our affirmation of faith together as we sing holy, holy, holy.
be seated. And you made the right call. We can't sing that hymn sitting down. It just doesn't feel right. So I'm glad you stood. <laughs> Our scripture this morning comes to us from the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 24. The Lord said to Moses, come up on the mountain and stay here for a while. I will give you the two flat stones on which I have written the laws that my people must obey. Moses and Joshua, his assistant, got ready. Then Moses started up the mountain to meet with God. Moses stayed there 40 days and nights. To the people, the Lord's glory looked like a blazing fire on top of the mountain. We skip ahead in the story. And Moses went back down the mountain with the two flat stones on which God had written all of the laws by God's own hand. And God had used both sides of the stone. Now when Joshua heard the noisy shouts of the people, he said to Moses, a battle must be going on down in the camp. But Moses replied, it doesn't sound like they are shouting because they have won or lost a battle. They are singing wildly. As Moses got closer to the camp, he saw the golden calf idol they had created. And he saw the people dancing around it. And it made Moses so angry, he threw down the stones and broke them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. He melted the idol the people had made. He ground it into powder, scattered it in their water, and made them drink it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Amen. I love that hymn. Be still, my soul. It's not easy for me to be still. My mind constantly will jump from one task to the next. One of the side effects of my anxiety medicine is that my leg will shake when I'm sitting down. My body literally cannot be still. And my soul? My soul can hear the words, the Lord is on your side, but to absorb it, to truly trust it, be still, my soul. Your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Every Sunday we hear the words of our faith tradition, the story of our past, and we sing of God's faithfulness. We offer prayers of thanks for God's providence. But when I walk out these doors or turn off the screen, and I really meditate on the song that your hope your confidence, let nothing shake. I already feel myself start to get antsy and unsettled. Nothing shake? In the collection of our faith history, there is this pivotal story that's found in the book of Exodus. And it sets the stage. It will define everything that comes after it. For 400 years, God's people have been the victims of slavery, injustice, even a murderous rampage against their children. And God comes to the people and promises redemption. And they watch God use a man named Moses to show wonders and miracles. There are plagues of frog and locust, hail and darkness against their oppressors. A giant sea will split into two and God's people will walk across on dry land. And throughout the story of God's miraculous power, there is a reoccurring promise. I am your God and you are my people. And I will show you a new way to live. I will take you to a land and you will be safe and prosperous do not be afraid. The Spirit of God comes to guide these people in this journey of rebirth. The cloud of God will guide them by day, the fire of God by night. Bread appears in the desert to sustain them. Water will pour out of a rock to quench their thirst. Miracle after miracle, over and over, the God of your past the God of your ancestors will guide these people to a new future. The journey of salvation will bring them to this holy place called Mount Sinai where God descends upon the mountain and thunder and smoke pour forth and no creature steps foot on this holy ground lest they die. And the glory of God descends to meet with Moses to share the way that these people will now live. Rules to guide them, filled with compassion and justice and love. The Ten Commandments. And a central theme that binds them together, that God is holy. And God has chosen you to become a new people. And while all of this is happening at the top of the mountain, down below, the people of God are terrified. Their souls are not still. They cry out to the leaders who are with them. They say, we are scared. This is different. We have left the comfortable and the familiar and we are in a strange land. We don't know what's coming next. Give us something to cling to. Give us something that feels like the old world that will comfort us. And so they make a golden idol. This desperate, flawed attempt to avoid a future that has been promised to them. 
to return the control and power back to their own feeble hands. And so Moses comes down from the mountain and he's carrying this covenant, this promise of God. He's holding in his heart the glimpse of a future of what could be. And he sees the people and how much they just messed up. And he smashes the tablets to the ground. And I just think, poor Moses. He's just frustrated beyond belief. I mean, the people saw the miracles. They were part of the wonders. How can they still not believe? And yet, I really feel for God's people. They're just desperately trying to find normal, trying to find familiar. They're frightened by this changing landscape, this changing routine. Either way, when the tablets break, it's a symbol of this deeper crack that's forming between God's promised future and a people who are just too afraid to step into it. Because after 10 plagues, a sea being divided into two, bread from heaven, this rescue from injustice, a covenant for a people to live in this new way, in a new land, is lying broken on the ground beyond repair. And we know that feeling. We have been there before when everything just feels broken. And there's all this uncertainty and fear bubbling up until we just throw our hands in the air and our hearts cry out, I cannot take this anymore. And from the rubble, we hear the song that starts to quietly float above all the scattered pieces that are left. Leave to your God to order and provide. For in every change, God faithful will remain. God could have given up on the people and walked away. But instead, the breaking of the tablets is not the end. God does not abandon the promise, just like God will never give up on you. Now that being said, it's not the end of the story. The people of God still go on this 40-year journey to unlearn the old ways and to step into the new reality, the new identity that God has promised. And there's still a lot of hard work, and there are tough moments and more lessons to be learned in a wilderness. But the covenant that was made became a covenant that was fulfilled, and it could never be broken no matter the mistakes the people made. The vision that God gave to Moses, that God gave to the people years ago, still came true, even if it looked different than everyone thought it was going to be at the beginning of that journey. Two years ago, almost to the day, I was told by the bishop of our conference that I was being appointed to a church called Grace. And you welcomed me and my family with such gracious and loving arms into this ministry and the work you were doing here. And as I sat with you, as I prayed with you, as I laughed with you, I heard a vision slowly rising from you, almost like this beautiful melody. And it was about a passion to love and care for each other and for this neighborhood we've been called to. This devotion to the kingdom work that was happening right here and a willingness to enter into the hard work to bring justice and compassion to this place. Two years ago, no one thought a year of quarantine and being forced out of our sanctuary would be part of that vision. No one thought a church merger with our sister congregation, University United Methodist, was going to be part of that vision. And I can't tell you how many times I have heard, 
well, this is not the way I thought God was going to do it. But the vision that was given is still a vision being fulfilled. And COVID did not break that commitment to God. And all the mountains of paperwork and extra meetings we've been in has not broken our commitment to God. And if anything, these bumps in the road that at times have been frustrating us and confusing us, it's also produced this great love and commitment to each other and to the mission. Because the God who began a good work at Waterman and Skinker will carry it on to completion. And all of God's people said, Amen. No, I'm not done with the sermon. I just wanted you to agree with me at that point. Yeah, I thought you got excited. Here's the lesson of this covenant that I love. It's for you, but it's also for us. Things will break. And we will be afraid. And the unknown of the future can be so scary and we will be tempted to forget the promises of God or let our souls be troubled. But God will not give up on you and God will not give up on this church. So even if the world around us starts to crumble, we can say, be still my soul. Be still the soul of grace, church. For the hour is hastening on. Disappointment and grief and fear are gone. Sorrow forgot and love's purest joy restored. God has shown us the vision for this place. And it is the promise of a space where tears will be wiped dry, children will be cherished, justice will be pursued, and from our songs and our prayers, joy will be restored. So do not be afraid as we live into this vision. For the God who was faithful and who has begun this good work will carry it on until completion. Let us pray together. God, when we do not know what comes next, and we can only take one step May it be a step into faithfulness. May we trust you with just this next day and then the next and then the next so that when we look back and see the journey you have taken us on, we can say, look, God was there guiding us the whole time. And so we pray individually for all things that unsettle our souls but also for our church and the vision you have given us. God, your spirit is here, and you have called us to do such justice and love in the name of Jesus. So embolden our hearts as we live into that promise. In your name we pray, amen. In response, I invite you to stand as we sing together.
church, I'm going to ask you to be seated because we've got to do just a little bit of good, good work. And I want to make sure that not only is God taking care of you, but I'm taking care to make sure you've got all the information that you need. So remember, today at 4.30 over Zoom, we're going to have a town hall to talk about this potential merger with University United Methodist Church. And I want to say a very special thank you to everyone who's been involved on the vision team who has met, are you ready for this, every Sunday for months, it feels like for years at this point, to talk about what could be and how we can do this well. And so they're going to be on the Zoom call to answer your questions, to give you updates on their conversations. Then later in the week, we're going to have, I know your bulletin says four, we're going to have two listening sessions this week at seven o'clock. It's a chance for you just to call in it, to make sure that you've been heard. If you've got any last concerns or questions that you want to share with our leadership, we'll have both of those. All that information's in your bulletin. Within the next 48 hours, you are going to be inundated with so much good information. And this is the official part that I need to do right now. On May 16th at 4.30 p.m., there will be a church conference to consider a resolution providing for the merger of University United Methodist Church into Grace United Methodist Church St. Louis. It's being called according, I know you all really care about this, paragraph 2546 of the Book of Discipline. It's been acknowledged by our district superintendent who's allowed us to call this church conference. Let me translate. That means if you are a member of Grace Church, you have a chance to vote on this. It won't be just our leadership. We want everyone to vote on this potential merger resolution. So what you're getting by Tuesday at lunchtime, you're going to get either by your email or a paper copy. I can send you multiple if you like. You're going to get the letter with this official call to, on it. You're going to get a copy of the merger story. That's the document that this vision team has put together to say, this is what we think this merger could be and working through that. You're going to also get the legal resolution that you'll be voting on and it will be just a yes or no vote and you're going to get all the details on how we're going to take this vote it will all be on zoom it will not be in person but we will have ways if you don't have access to zoom to make sure that your vote is counted that's the official work of the church that we've got coming in the next two weeks above all please keep praying for all of our siblings at University United Methodist because it's become very aware to them and their process of grief that they're getting ready to say goodbye to their building but not to their mission and not to their vision. Their passion is there and I have seen such hope from our church and theirs at what we could do together even more for the kingdom work here in this place. So please pray as we come into these final weeks to consider all of this and do not be afraid to reach out. We're trying to have lots of opportunities for you to ask questions, um, to offer all of your hopes and dreams and excitements. You can always email the church office, call myself, call Ann Perry, our council chair. We're here for you. And so now we're going to receive the benediction, and then I invite you to sit and enjoy the postlude. And then when the postlude is done, I hope you fellowship outside the church. Did you get that hint there? Like, please spread the joy of Christ outside the church after the postlude. But receive the benediction. God is going to take care of you. And nothing is going to break that this week. Nothing is, even if everything falls to pieces, God will still take care of you. And I know that God is going to find a way to use you to take care of someone else. So I pray that God gives you the strength and the words and the compassion to flow out the mercy of God so that all can know that they are loved. 
Go this week knowing that the grace of our Father, the love of our Savior, and the fellowship of God's Spirit is with each of us in our respective ministries this week. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.